Here we go. Excellent. We see you. Okay. And we hear you. All right, Michael. Great. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone here. Thank you for joining us. Earlier today, we announced that uh, we've appointed Omar Manaya as Senior Advisor to Baseball Operations. Uh, Omar has had a pretty incredible baseball journey, uh, being involved with a number of teams, including one across town, uh, the MLB Players Association, and Major League Baseball itself, and he is a local guy. Um, before we get going, uh, we have a few items of housekeeping. Uh, this call is not permitted to be broadcast live or rebroadcast in its entirety. Uh, however, clips may be used as usual. Uh, please use the raise hand function to get in the queue to ask questions. Uh, but before we take questions from the media, uh, I'm going to turn the floor over to Omar uh, for some opening remarks. Omar. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Well, first of all, Happy New Year to everybody. And uh, for me, it's a great start for a new year to be able to uh, be uh, with the team, a local team, as a person that a kid that grew up in New York his whole life and uh, grew up uh, on the on the east side of uh, of New York City on Queens, uh, to be able to be uh, have this opportunity to be here with a uh, uh, part of the uh, you know a, a story organization like the New York Yankees. Um, uh, it's uh, for me. It's by my family. It is great. Um, you know, I first want to thank, uh, of course, um, you know Hal Steinbrenner, uh, the owner uh, of the Yankees, and uh, Randy Levine, and of course uh, Brian Cashman, who you guys know. I mean, Brian have been friends for for many years, uh, competed against each other, uh, but we just have a, a a good friendship. And to me, this is one of the reasons that I'm here. Was, you know, Brian has um, had uh, asked permission for me uh, in previous times. I uh, actually asked permission for me to come on board in last March. Uh, and um, I decided to stay with Major League Baseball because I was working and, you know, been involved with, uh, in the actual, you know, what's going on. The uh, base, Major League Baseball is having, starting all these initiatives uh, domestically and internationally, which is um, the, 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 the combine, uh, the pre-draft, uh, the post-draft, the college leagues. And it was a lot of fun. And you guys know my, I love scouting. I love the, you know, the entry part of the game. Uh, and I told him no at that time, uh, but we spoke about it recently and I just couldn't say no this time. I feel that um, to be able to be with uh, Brian, uh, you know, guys that the Yankee organizations, people that I know, like Gene Afterman, who I know from many years and have had a lot of respect, uh, you know, now you bring in like Brian Sabian, who in my eyes and to me is a, it's, all, it's going to be a Hall of Fame, should be a Hall of Fame executive. I also think that when you look at Brian's thing, to be able to run those Brian and what I consider two future Hall of Fame executives, and then with guys that I have a great respect for, uh, you know, guys like Jim Hendry, and then, you know, Michael Fishman, who I've had a relationship with, and I think I've thought the world with, and has probably one of the best uh, analytics department in the game, and has been doing it for many years. Uh, people like that, I, you know, I haven't met you know, Kevin Reese much, but I'm looking forward to it. And Damon Oppenheimer and me and Damon go way back. Uh, Damon's mom used to work uh, for Sandy Johnson, who's been one of my mentors, and me and Damon go way back. And Tim Neri, uh, who I've known, and uh, actually when, when we were with the Mets, we, I recommended him to be, uh, to interview for the managing job. So there's a lot of connectivity, a lot of people, and I'm a big believer that um, it's about people. This game is about, you know, the human element of the game. I love it. And there's a, to be able to come to the story franchise, I'm just honored. And I want to thank everybody. I'm looking forward to um, be part of the Yankee family. Um, uh, and for me, like, like I said, when you're from Queens and you go into the Bronx, I do remember one thing. I do remember as a kid going to Yankee Stadium and getting um, bad days. They used to have bad days and helmet days. And I used to have my Horace Clark bat. And I remember that for you guys, if you if you grew up in those days, it was in Channel 11, and everybody used to raise their bats. And that do I remember as far as that Yankee connectivity. And so, but it's an honor. And, to, and when it's all said and done, this is a successful organization. But the, the, you know, the goal every year is to win the World Series. And that challenge, uh, and I, I'm looking forward to doing whatever Brian, the staff, wants from me. Um, and basically just to be, you know, assist. And that's what I'm, I'm, I'm an honor to be able to be here today and looking forward to it. Omar, thank you very much. I uh, appreciate that. Again, congratulations. And I think we can take a first question now. And we'll start with Brian Hoke from yankees.com. 
Hi, Omar. Congratulations. Uh, you mentioned Brian Sabian, back-to-back uh, -back days now, the two of you coming on. What do you feel like the two of you will be able to add specifically to this organization? Well, I think when you look at it, uh, you're going to look at somewhere close to somewhere close to 70 plus years of experience uh, with those 70 plus years of experience in different roles. Um, you have a lot of, you have some success and you also have uh, a lot of, probably when you're in the scouting business, you're probably going to have a lot of say, hey, I, I, that did not go well, what I thought about. I think what we're going to bring to, to the group is just uh, experience in, 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 in evaluation, in scouting and in leadership, in team building, uh, because we've done it. Um, and I think that uh, our goal, and I know Brian and have the utmost respect, respect for Brian, uh, is to, like, you know, when it's all said and done, I think I heard, listen, I heard to Brian's uh, uh, press conference too, you know, we started off as scouts and that's what we like to do. And we're blessed to be able to be in our, where we are in our career, to be able to scout and scout from, from top to bottom. So I think we're going to be able to just to provide advice, senior advice, to um, the organization across the board. Thank you. We can take the next one from Chris Kirshner from The Athletic. Hey, Omar, congratulations. Um, you've obviously been involved in front offices for a while now. How much of a balance do you feel is necessary with having scouting types like yourself and analytical types to provide that balance? That's a great question, Chris. And the word, that key word that I think you're using, and I think what you're going to see more and more is balance. I think we all agree that the game has changed. I think we all have to be open to new information, all kinds of forms of new information. But when the decision is done, when you're talking about team building, organization of building, balance is better. And I think, um, I think you know, I, I'm, I take a lot of pride in, 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 in learning new ideas, new and working, you know, uh, working with all these um, new ideas of, or people that have new ideas of the game. I'm a big believer in the human element. I'm a big believer that the human element counts. Um, so, but I think anytime you make a decision, it's, it's gotta be a balanced decision. And I'm, I believe that, you know, uh, with the staff that we have here, and I say to you, you know, to be able with successful organizations and I'm, you know, I can tell you that, when you look at the Dodgers, I know, you know, people that are there and others that are doing well, Braves with that, Alex Anthropoulos, who I feel very proud of. Uh, it's about balance. And I think, you know, you know, we just, you know, I, I think this organization has done a great job because look at the track record, look at the winning. So that is, that's the evidence. Uh, but you know what? It's, you know, great job. We, we want to always get better. And I'm looking forward to being a part of that. We can take the next one from Pete Caldera from the record. Hey, Omar, congratulations. Pete, how are you, man? You still great, great, singing? Omar. You still yeah. singing? I'll send you my dates. You're the man. You. You're still singing. I love that. I've been many winter meetings with you singing, and you are awesome. Appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, off season, so uh, it's nightclub season. Hey, I, I remember uh, back when you were the Mets, uh, Steve Phillips would, would call you his contrarian, and, uh, you know, just a just wondering if that, you know, part of that healthy debate, you know, debating talent and, and trades and things like that is, is going to be a part of what, what you bring to the Yankees and what you kind of look forward to doing as well. Uh, Peter, you know that once a contrarian, always a contrarian. You know how that is. <laughs> you don't change contrarian attitude. Uh, I guess at that time they call it uh, thinking outside the box. Um, I've always prided myself in thinking outside the box. Uh, I, I, I always say, I pride myself more in signings of players that uh, that nobody thinks about. You know, the, the number one round pick, those guys are easy because everybody sees them. I pride myself more on the long, the 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 the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the late drafts of the world. You know, that's what I pride myself on a lot. But at, at the end of the day is in that room when you're making decisions, uh, you know, I, I guess, yeah, I, I don't, I'm not one of those to conform to what the industry is saying or what people say. Now that, of course, is um, it's it, you know you got to be able to sometimes be right when you go against the grain. But I hope that I'm able to bring new ideas and bring uh, uh, different ideas and kind of off the, uh, outside the box ideas to any situation that I'm involved with. Great, appreciate it. Thank you.
As a reminder, uh, please use the raise hand function to get in the queue, and we can take the next one from Sweeney Murdy from WFAN. Hello, Omar. Congratulations. Sweeney, good, great talking to you. Yes. Nice How to are see you? you. Hey, dude, first, real quick, I don't know, is there a difference? Like, Brian Sabian was named advisor to Brian Cashman. You're being named advisor to baseball operations. Is there some sort of distinction in who you report to or how your uh, your responsibilities are laid out? I mean, really, I want to report to, uh, to, uh, to Brian Cashman, you know, and how Brian decides to use us, that's going to be up to Brian, you know. And to me, it's all about what, what can we do to help the Yankees. And as far as uh, all those things, but I'm guessing that because of our background in scouting and development and, and you know, all kinds of scouting, you know, we're, and, you know, it's fair to say that if you look at my resume, you look at um, a Brian's resume, it's going to be one that's going to be in player personnel. And that's what it is. How it plays out, I don't know, as long as we do the best thing to make the Yankees better every day. And kind of following up on what Pete was asking, like, do you feel your role in here is to just offer your opinion or are you you feel like you're going to have some latitude to push brian and say you know like push for things you believe in and maybe uh have some hand in decisions as opposed to kind of just offering your opinion and having it be part of the puzzle well listen after being in the front office for many years being a general manager being a scouting director the one thing i was taught early on okay is when you believe in something you push for it and that means all it means is I'm going to have an opinion. Doesn't mean they're going to the guys are going to do it, but I'm going to have an opinion. If you if you talk to people that either I work for or work with, uh, two things. I I I'm going to have an opinion, but I also learned early enough that when you, whatever this is decided, you move on and go on to the next one. But I I was told you cannot be a good baseball man unless you push and you you were you know I don't know no good baseball man that does not push for his opinion for what he believes in. If, if you know of one, let me know. But I was told, <laughs> you know, hey, if you, that I just don't know one. You, may, you mentioned earlier, sorry, last one. You mentioned earlier, you're talking about the balance. Like outside looking in, do you feel like that balance has been missing from the Yankees between scouting and analytics? No, I don't know. First of all, I don't know that. But I will tell you, listen, you know how many, <laughs> look at the wins. I mean, look at the wins. I mean, come on, when is that? And I will tell you this. I'm very, very, uh, Michael Fishman and his group. And you got to remember for the past couple of years, I've been going there watching games because me and Frank, me and Brian are friends. So I get to know some people, but I, I, I don't, I don't know that. I don't, all I can tell you is you got some very good people there, uh, that I have a lot of respect on both sides and all I'm, I'm just honored to be able to be a part of that. And, you know, as far as I, I don't know that you guys may know that better, but I'll tell you one thing, how many wins was it? 99 wins this year? That, yeah. That's a lot of wins, and it's been constantly, and it's been playoff. So, yeah, I think I look at that more than anything else. Thanks, Omar. Congratulations. We'll take the next one from Ron Blum from the AP. Hey, hey Omar, congratulations. Thank when you, you look at the, the group of you and Jimmy and Sabes, how would you say you guys have different opinions from what you know of each other and what, what are the similarities among you three? Uh, well, first of all, similarities that we've both been general managers that um, have been in, have won sometimes or have, have made good decisions and bad decisions. Uh, if you know Jimmy, Jimmy is awesome as far as conversation. I, I love him. I mean, He's funny. He, I have the whole full respect of him. Brian, you know, is, we all have probably different, but in the end, we've all been there and have good moments and bad moments, uh, and we understand that. But I think when it's all said and done, I think we're in areas right now where we want to be able to help and be able to assist and do that. So similarity is that we're both, all three of us have come from baseball operation position as general manager. Um, uh, you know, Brian, you know, it's, you know, Brian's won three World Series. Jimmy and I have probably come close. We've been to that either, you know, listen, I was an assistant when we had the Subway Series, but I was close in 2006, the same way uh, Jimmy was close, I believe, in 2003, I think it was, when he almost, I think he might have been the general manager that time. I'm not sure. Yeah. So, uh, but I think what we have, I think is, we've been around long enough to know that we don't know it all, and we've been around long enough to know that we just want to be able to help.
And do you think from in the 30 years since you started, the decision-making groups in front offices, have they evolved to have more people and more opinions as you've gone through your different teams, back to the Mets, then Padres, and this situation? Oh, no doubt, Ron. You know that. I mean, come on. You guys have been in the game long enough. First of all, let's start off, but let's look at the commissioner's office. How many people are in the commissioner's office? The game has grown so much in a lot of good ways, in a lot of great ways with young talent, uh, people of all kinds of ideas, uh, you know, having women involved in the game, the decision making. I think the game is really uh, has changed, but it's changed for the good. Uh, but like anything else, the game can go one way. And then, you know, listen, we've all been there where this is the, you know, this is the way to do things. And then it's changing. Actually, it was changing this year. We're going back to you can, you know, the actual the way we play the game. You know, you can't have a, um, what is that, a, uh, a uh, teams that are, uh, I'm trying to, I'm thinking, I'm thinking now when teams now you can't uh, move players in the opposite, you know, uh, yeah, the shift. shift, you can't shift guys. So the game has always changed, but on personnel, of course, without a doubt. And that's natural. That's natural because of technology and in the room, the actual room itself. Uh, decision making, uh, you have much more people involved, and it should be. Uh, and you look at, look, you're making decisions now to 300 million, you know, 250 million on the major league side, and then on the amateur side, you know, it's a totally different ball game now with showcases. And then we're not even getting into the international side, which is a total different ball game, which is something that I was doing with Major League Baseball, which I love to do. Was uh, how can we make the international space better? The entry. Uh, we're trying to get the international draft. So the game has changed in a lot of ways, and the game has always changed. The game will always change and evolve. Thank you. We'll go to Jack Curry from the Yes Network. Hey, Omar, congratulations. Jack, I still go by your house here in uh, in Jersey every time, and I said that's where Jack Curry used to live before, you know. <laughs> When you were average guy, now you a big guy, so you had to move, you know, from my neighborhood. That's how it goes, you know. I don't think anyone on this call cares about where I live or any of that stuff, but I, I appreciate you saying that. And I think I run by your house once in a while. But um, <laughs> I wanted to go by, back to something you said at the beginning of uh, the the call. You said that Brian had courted you in the past. What made this time right? What did he say? What kind of promises were made? What kind of responsibilities were asked for from you? What just made this time the right time to have this marriage? I just thought it was the right time for me. Uh, look, I've been involved for the past two years. I've been involved with the Mets as an ambassador. Uh, more nothing to do with baseball operation. I was more involved in, in marketing, ticketing, and those type of things. But my baseball, my baseball involvement was with the commissioner's office, you know, involved in, and like I said, in those other areas. But that being said, you know, I'm a baseball operation guy. Um, and I told Brian, even in March, I said, look, Brian, I want to be able to try to do this with Major League Baseball. Really what it boiled down to was that, you know, we we're, we're building and, you know, being able to help Major League Baseball, two things, the the initiatives that are in, in, in like, you know, we, for, so you know, baseball never had a combine. For the past two years, baseball has a combine. Think about that. Football has one. Base to be a part of that, and that's working and going really well. There's a combination. There's a pre-draft league, post-draft league. As you guys know, there was like about 20-some teams that were cut off. Opportunities. I've always been, how can I put myself involved in opportunities to help people play the game? So I thought this past year was, I needed one more year to be able to do this. And, and then, of course, the international draft, the international draft, which Major League Baseball still work. And I'm a big believer that we need to do it. So I'm able to, you know, it was the right time, but it was a March. Certain things were not right that I felt were important. And now I feel that it is, this is, it's a, it felt what, it was the right time for me right now to come on board. And I'm just grateful for, to Brian and, and all the Yankee, you know, senior uh, staff to want me on board. And then just to follow up on the balance between scouting and analytics that you've been asked about, Gene Michael, who I know you knew well, used to look at a stat sheet and say, these numbers are very important. So that would have been analytics back then. But then he used to point to his eyes and say, but these are just as important. How much does that philosophy correlate with your own philosophy? Very similar. I mean, I had a great relationship with Stick. 
Uh, but I will tell you one thing about Stick, and 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 this this people don't you know, I know because we have me and Stick had a lot of baseball conversation. Okay, but one thing about Stick, Stick was early on on that on base percentage stuff. Yes. People don't forget that on base percentage early on that was analytics. <laughs> so Stick, you know, besides being a hell of a baseball man, and and because he was a pirate. Um, uh, and my, my mentor's guy by the name of Sandy Johnson, they played together. So, you know, and stick over the years. And there was remember stick will always get those. He used to like those Latin players too. He was always big on Latin players because he grew up with the pirates, but stick, I still remember talking. And if I'm not mistaken, that team, he was one of those early guys on that. Look, I want athletes, but I need, I need guys to, you know, to get on base. So he was, and I agree with him, you know, it's that it's not only just the eye. But I think you need to use the information. He just used it in a different way, you know, and now that was the balance. But understand that Stick was not, he was ahead of his time and, and his ways of thinking about certain data information that was important. Stick loved players that would play the game both ways. You play for Stick, he likes speed because he grew up with the pirate system. And we talked a lot of baseball over the years, Stick and I. You know, I was taught by people that played in the pirate, the athletic. Uh, but being an athlete is not enough. You got to be an athlete. You got to know how to play and you got to be able to get on base and all those things. So to stick credit, you know, we have a lot of similarities uh, because we talked a lot of baseball over the years. Thank you, Omar. We'll go back to Brian Hoke with Yankees.com. Hey, Omar. I'm just curious, uh, your dealings with Cashman when you were a GM, did you guys ever come close to completing a trade? Did you, was there anything that you were kind of working on with him? What were your dealings like with Cashman? I think we did a deal together. It might've been the last one and it could have been, I think I gave him Stanton and he gave me some lefty. Uh, Felix know, Heredia. Lefty. Who? Felix Heredia, right? I believe so. Yeah. yeah, I believe so. And I will say to the, of course, recently, I think in 2000, 2018 and 19, we kind of, well, when we had Wheeler out there, of course, Brody was the general manager, but a lot of the conversation was me and Cash together. Um, and I remember that there was a tray in place that I'm not going to name the guys, but <laughs> there was a trade in place. I think I, uh, I say, I don't know. I'm going to pass on that. And looking back on it right now, uh, I think we probably, you know, unless they won the World Series, I think the names that he gave us were guys that we should, maybe we should have taken. It wasn't Aaron Judge, was it? No, that was not for sure. That was not for sure. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Omar. Any other questions for Omar? Okay. Omar, uh, thank you for joining us. Really appreciate it. Congratulations. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you around the stadium. Okay, great. Thank you. Take care. Thank you, everyone else, for joining us as well. If you need anything, give a holler to the department. Thank you.